G'day guys, welcome to 5 Minute Friday. What are we doing today? We're comparing the Hero 8 versus the Hero 9 for astrophotography. They're GoPro cameras, they're action cameras. Are they any good for astrophotography? Well, you bet you they are. Let's get into it. So the two cameras have different sensors. The specs are here. What I found interesting though is that I can't find anywhere on the internet that shows the physical dimensions of the GoPro Hero 9 sensor. I have a feeling because it's been the same physical dimensions in the 6, 7 and 8 and I suspect it's the same in the 9. So what does that mean? It's got more megapixels but the megapixels might be more condensed. So what does that mean for astrophotography? It might actually mean a fair bit. If you follow anything to do with the GoPro series of cameras, there's a few different Facebook groups and there's a quite a few people who have certainly complained a bit about the amount of digital noise uh, on the Hero 9 and on the Hero 8. Well, you've got to put this into perspective. These are not uh, you know, Canon full frame or Nikon full frame or Sony full frame cameras. They're just not. They're tiny little sensors. So you're going to be pushing them pretty hard to get an astro photo like this. There's been a fair bit of talk around in the Facebook groups about these blue and white, or blue and red dots, I should say. Um, people calling them noise. They're not noise, they're hot pixels. Or, and basically what they are is that you're pushing the sensor really hard. I'm not going to go too much into the details of the science behind the hot pixels, but it just happens on most cameras. In fact, it happens on all cameras that I know of. I've shot Olympus, I've shot uh, Nikon, I've shot Sony, and I'm, my go-to at the moment is Canon. I've been shooting Canon now for, well, for a long, long time. It's my pro gear, it's what I use for weddings, it's what I use for all these sort of photos right here. So I've got a little bit of experience around the astrophotography space, if you like. Um, so when it comes to the hot pixels, I'm going to say it happens on across all brands of cameras regardless of sensor size, regardless of what badge is on the front of that camera. In fact, I've even sent back to Canon uh, a, a Canon 5D Mark III because of hot pixels under warranty and it came back, didn't have them. I kept shooting astrophotography, low light photography, and guess what? They came back. You can search through all over the internet, you're going to find Olympus has the problem, Nikon has the problem, Sony has the problem, even in the flagship kill anything at night, uh, A7 series, they had a major problem with this. So every camera has it, and it's just understanding the camera that you have, working out what sort of settings that you can have that is going to limit the amount of these hot pixels that you get. Don't get me wrong, you can pull out a Canon, or you can pull out the GoPro Hero 8 or the GoPro Hero 9, put it up, shoot some astrophotography, and you may get no dots at all. You may be just lucky. And that's just the way it is. You can send that thing back for, for a warranty repair and chances are the new one's going to do it as well. So when you look at the size of the sensors that we have here, they're really quite small. So you can expect that when you're pushing these things as hard as we are with high ISOs, with long shutter speeds, you're probably going to encourage some hot pixels. You're probably going to encourage a bit of noise. Um, at the end of the day, these are action cameras and um, that's what they're designed to do. What we're doing with astrophotography with these cameras is we're really pushing them hard. So anyway, I'm pretty impressed with what you can get out of these things anyway. You, would, you may have seen uh, the video I did on the GoPro Hero 8 and how I shot astrophotography with that. This is the first time tonight that I'm doing it with the 9. So we'll see how we go. How we've got this set up is the GoPro just sitting on top of a regular tripod. I'll put all the links in the description down below there of all the gear that I'm using here. Uh, it's on a ball head, so you, know, you loosen it off and you can tilt this sucker around any way you want it to tilt it. Um, it's on a higher tripod. Depending on what you're shooting, sometimes I use a Joby tripod. Other times, for the sake of instructional, like we're doing here now, I'll put it on something that's kind of head height, so I'm not bending down, laying on the ground, taking photos up at the stars. Where are we here? Well, I'm in north central Victoria in Australia. The nearest town to me, well, 
the small town that I live in here is about two and a half thousand people. It's a really small town. Um, there's not much light pollution here. About 60 k's that way, there's a town. There's no light pollution on the horizon. When I take a really long exposure photo at night time, you can see a little bit on the horizon, like in this photo here. These are towns that you can see on the horizon and they're about 60 k's away. So light pollution plays a big part. Where we are here is nothing, nothing at all. Occasionally I'll see a car cross the road down the end of the road there. Um, I'm in dairy country here, so you, sometimes you might see a milk tanker at night time out on the horizon. But other than that, the skies are crystal clear. I can see with the naked eye where the Milky Way goes through the sky here. So we will absolutely see this in the photos that we're taking now. All right, what I'm going to do is take four photos. I'm going to take two with the eight, two with the nine, exactly the same photos, exactly the same situation right here with those settings. 30 seconds, um, flat, wide angle. I'll shoot one at ISO maximum of 400, one at ISO maximum of 800, and then we'll throw them onto Lightroom on the computer and we'll see just how bloody good these things can be in the dark. Let's go. All right, we've put the four photos into Lightroom. We shot four photos, two with the GoPro Hero 8, two with the GoPro Hero 9, both of them on exactly the same settings. Two photos of each one. Um, ISO minimum um, was 400 and then the ISO minimum was 800. I think that the hot pixels tend to work harder um, when we shoot at a high ISO. So I've loaded all four photos into Lightroom and let's have a look. First photo here, first two photos are the GoPro Hero 9. So this one here and this one here is shot at uh, ISO 400. This one here at ISO 800. The difference really isn't that great on the 9. The next two photos, this one here is the GoPro Hero 8 at ISO 400 and 800. And you can see that one there gets a little bit brighter. What we're going to do first, the way that you can find the hot pixels and see the detail in Lightroom at least, just hit the auto button and see what it does to the photo. It's obviously blown it right out. There's a lot of noise in that photo. But if I zoom in right now, there might be one just there. This is the GoPro Hero 9. And I don't see any others. I'll go and have a look at the photo that was taken at ISO 800. Obviously we can go high with ISO, but where we are here it's really low light. There's a lot of bright stars and I don't need to. And looking around this one here at ISO 800, there's nothing here either. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go and have a look at the Hero 8. Hit the auto button. You see all these lines going across it. The sensor is clearly not as good for astrophotography on the 8 as what it is on the 9. That 20 megapixels, it certainly makes a difference. Already without zooming in, I can see the hot pixels on this photo. Look at them all. There's a green one there, red ones, blue ones, another green one. The uh, hot pixels on the 8, on this 8, is pretty bad. We're going to have a look at um, the same camera at ISO 800. And yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. But keep in mind, these are small sensors, so yeah, it's done pretty well. I'm interested now to see back over here at the on the 9 this is something that's really bothered me all the time with the 8 whenever I've done an astro photo with the 8 are these horizontal lines they really really get to me they um, it's just not a cool look in a photo and you can't really get rid of them very easily what's interesting though is the 9 doesn't really have them No, it doesn't really have them at all. I might do a quick edit on this and show you what I do. This light that's down the bottom here is just a car that's coming across the farm on a neighboring property there. So we'll decrease this brightness because that's just way too bright. I'm going to go down to the noise reduction, the luminance. You can see on the preview pane there, we'll bring that 
about 25, 26, maybe a little bit higher. That's not too bad there. With the sharpening, I'm going to sharpen up so that the ground is sharp and that the stars are nice and sharp. So we'll increase the sharpening. We'll hit the option button on the Mac here. Click on the masking and bring the masking up. Then we'll mask out some of those stars and the ground. That's pretty good. Yep, I like that. Do something with this white balance and the tint because it looks too green and too hot. So if I'll decrease that white balance, bring the temperature down a little bit and bring the tint up a little bit to add a bit of magenta, that's not too bad. I like that. I'm going to add a radial tool. Bring it out roughly the same size as the core. Rotate it around to where the core is. Bring it across the core. And we're going to increase the clarity on that. It brings out more detail, I think, in the core. And we'll increase the temperature a little bit. Not too much. We don't want it to look like a big orange ball in the sky. And that's that. You know what? I'm even going to use this for the thumbnail on this video. Well, I think you'll agree with the two cameras that I have, the 8 and the 9, the 9 kills it. The 9 does a really bloody good job. I've got no hot pixels on that 9 at all. Like I said though, you're probably going to get more hot pixels as the time goes on. And I've used the GoPro Hero 8, obviously a lot more than the 9. Um, this is only the 20 second photo I've actually taken on the 9. So uh, look, this is this photo here, this is at uh, ISO 400. That's really low. We'll get a lot more detail the harder we push this camera. Um, that's it for today guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel, I'm going to do some more work with this Hero 9 uh, next week when I head out to a, a pretty cool location that you can shoot some really interesting astro photos. We'll shoot those ones in RAW and we'll see what sort of detail we can get out of them then. Alright guys, I'll see you then.